Awesome, thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Cristiano. Uh, I work for uh, Braintree. We're part of PayPal. We do payments. Uh, this is my talk called A Credit Card Walks Into a Bar, which is a talk about credit cards and e-commerce. Uh, as I said, I'm Cristiano, and I work for Braintree. Actually, this talk, it's slightly different. It's kind of more of a series of bad jokes uh, by me, Cristiano, from Braintree. Uh, <laughs> So uh, what do we do? Like Braintree, we take payments for some of the big companies at the moment. I mean, we do Airbnb, Uber, GitHub, Slack, all the hip new companies. We pretty much take most of their payments. Uh, we have support for uh, PayPal, credit card, uh, all these kind of different payment methods, including Bitcoin and bank transfers here in Germany. Uh, but that's enough about the company. Uh, this is about a credit card walks into a bar, and I was promising you some jokes, so here we go. Credit card walks into the bar, he says to the bartender, I've been having a hard time meeting people. The bartender says, wait, aren't you supposed to be good at generating interest? <laughs> Thank you very much, I love you Salzburg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so different story, I have a cat. Uh, and he's a bit special, he's a bit special in the sense that he, um, come on. He, he sometimes is a bit weird. Uh, he also thinks he owns the house, like he, the, he's the king of the house. Um, but actually, you know, he's special because he has a kidney condition. Uh, so he can only eat specific kinds of food, but people really want to make photos of him. I don't know if you know, a couple of years ago, there was like the, um, the ad block guys. They made like a April Fool's version called the cat block, where it just replaced the entire internet with a cat. Uh, the cat that he used was that cat. Uh, I was very confused when I saw that coming out on April Fool's and I saw my own cat uh, in those images. Um, yeah, people like to take photos and videos of him, especially kids. Um, so what did I do? I'm a geek, I wrote an application that um, you know, charges people to you know, see his face. Um, so what did I do? Like a Raspberry Pi, no, so Arduino connected to a Raspberry Pi, connected to a webcam, that connects to Node, that then uses Kraken, that then uses Bootstrap, because of course it needs to be mobile first and everything, uh, Angular, and then, you know, I integrated payments with Braintree and I did some, you know, of course it's like responsive design, because that's very important, um, you know, and it's fully accessible. Uh, that was a lot of work. Uh, just to see my cat sleeping. <laughs> uh, you know, and it also charges kids. Uh, that, that's how much lines it took to just integrate the credit card. That's just, that, and that creates something like this where I can just fill in my credit card details and it works really nice. So this is what I do for a living. I just make these kind of stupid things. Um, and it's just amazing every time though when I see credit card forms online and they don't use any of these kind of solutions. So this talk is about, you know, oh sorry, you know, I, I know what you're thinking, I'm, I'm an asshole, um, but trust me, I'm raising money for his kidney surgery, it, it, it will come at some point. So, time for another joke, okay? So, credit card walks into bar, bartender says, why do you keep coming here day after day? The credit card form looks miserably at him and says, I'm just looking for some, Validation. <laughs> okay, great. So this talk is about horrible credit card forms. So there's a lot of horrible credit card forms. Like this is one from, uh, this is actually a great website. It's called linestanding.com. It's uh, if you've ever stand in line for an Apple phone, like you can just hire somebody to stand in line for you. Uh, so you can even like pick how, how many hours you want to have them stand in line for. Like, um, but like, it's a credit card form and it has like a million fields that they're asking you and it looks horrific. Um, so this talk is, you know, what not to do. I'm gonna show you what not to do and not because I you know, I'm know particularly well, it's just because I'm a user just like you guys. Uh, so it's, it's really just pretty much like things I think you shouldn't do. Now, why is this important? If you're trying to charge people money, abandonment rates are insane. Like, these are some big companies out there. You know, it's all like 60, 70%. So that's like 60, 70% of people that come to your payment page and then go, eh, eh, maybe not. Uh, that's the URL for that. So what shouldn't you do? First one, add a captcha. 
Everybody loves a good capture, right? It's the completely automated public Turing test to tell computers and humans apart. Uh, you know, that's pretty much like what it looks like, right? It's like, it's that or this kind of stuff, or this one's a great one, that's an actual one. It's like, again, and then it's like, you get these kind of like, this is one of those, it's like, I'm, I'm not a unicorn. I'm not, and Google, like, Google actually caught on to the guys who do Captcha, they actually caught on to this. Like, this is the current Captcha, like, they made a new version, and it's just a checkbox that says, I'm not a robot. Like, it could say, I'm not a unicorn, but they realize that they are a pain in the ass. So, I officially want to rename them. We're going to rename them to a completely automated process that causes headaches and anger. <laughs> okay? So don't use CAPTCHAs, you don't need to use them if you're taking somebody's credit card, either it will charge, it will not charge, don't try to like add a CAPTCHA on top of that. Secondly, ask users to register before they actually try to purchase something. Have you ever been to a website where like you come to this article and like before you've even had the time to read the article, like it goes like, are you, you know, do you want to review this website? And like, no, I've just spend like five seconds here, you know that. And they still show you the pop-up. The same thing goes for like purchases, right? So this is, um, this is a Dutch website. Uh, it's like a daily deal kind of thing. And it is a great thing, it's like when you wanna buy something, this is the next step, right? So that, so it's like first name, last name, email, et cetera, et cetera. This is even before they get to the payment page. That's just, that's just the stuff to be allowed to go and give them your payment details. Now, some websites do this a lot better. Um, this is Walmart. So they actually have a, a, a little button there like says continue as guest. So you just continue as a guest. Um, another US side, Crane and Barrel, they do a similar kind of thing. They just take the approach where you might just want to just continue and pay and then afterwards set up an account before you actually continue. Now, interestingly enough, this is especially on mobile. This is horrible, like the amount of apps that you know, you install the app and the first thing they want you to do is either log in or sign up. It's just, the bounce rate on that is insane. People just go away. They come open your app, they're like, do I really wanna give you my Twitter details and my Facebook details before I'm allowed to even know if that's worth it? Probably not. And if you're trying to convert payments, that's, again, a big problem. Okay, next joke. I know you're waiting for it. An American Express, walks into a bar in Moscow. And the bartender says, sorry, you're not allowed in here without a visa. <laughs> okay, so I'm making a lot of credit card type jokes, like all the different companies, right? Um, it's horrible when, 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 when companies don't actually parse your credit card number and just automatically detect what credit card you have. It's not hard, this is a credit card, this is basically it just explains like the first number is a major industry identifier, then it's like the issuer identification number, then it's your account number, and then a checksum. And if you go to Wikipedia, it pretty much has a whole list of it, and like there's even more of them. I mean, I blatantly copied this all from Wikipedia. Um, it's not hard to write a parser that just goes over this and figures out you know, who you're using. And still, like when you go to all these websites, this is Dell, this is Dell, they make a lot of money. And they're still asking you, like, what car do you have? Like, why am, I, why am I allowed to say Visa if I fill in my Amex, you know, number? What, why is that even possible? Um, and it gets funny because the UX around this, like, differs massively. Uh, so this is, again, a little drop down. But then we've got this one, which looks like, it looks like it's going to auto detect. But actually, you need to press on those images to select one. Um, this one, the same thing. Um, this one, the same thing, but the great thing is like it auto detects on this one. This is um, Victoria's Secret, my cat was shopping. Uh, <laughs> it auto detects the, um, the car type if you type the number in, but then you're still allowed to, on your own, change the car type. <laughs> and it's like, why is that allowed? It makes no sense, it makes absolutely no sense. Um, now there's a lot of solutions for this. Like if you're a fan of jQuery, um, there's a jQuery credit card validator. Uh, it looks a bit like that. You make a form and it can be validated and it will automatically tell you what the credit card is. Um, 
There are some more kind of like full UX ones that you know you type it in uh, and it automatically validates the fields for you, including date and if it's in the right format, etc. And of course, I love Braintree, obviously. Uh, we do, you know, we do a similar thing. This is like what the form looks like with us. Uh, you type in, you start typing in, it will detect Visa or Amex. It does all these little things. We haven't gone like a full for a full cart design, but you know, it's not hard. It's easy, and it means that it's another thing you don't have to ask your customers. Number three, CV who? Anybody here know what a CVV is? Exactly. It's the um, it's a little number on the back of a credit card, and like, but they're in different places on different cards. So this is like on the Amex, it's on the front, and then it's on the back on Visa and Mastercard. They're actually also, you know, and then we, we start making these little UX experiences where we start explaining like we have these little bubbles where you then can click on, and it will tell you not just what it does, but why we're asking you this, <laughs> like. Uh, I love this one, like it shows it, but then it only shows, like for Amex it shows and then the rest is like a bit generic. I love this one, this one says um, CVV is a three or four digit embossed or imprinted. Why do I care? Like, <laughs> it's displayed on the card. You don't need to use fancy words for this stuff. Um, the funny thing is like they're called different things on the different cards too. Like they're called CVV on mask or like, they have all these different names. So even if you just call it a CVV field, which is pretty much what most of them do, it's actually incorrect. Um, again, there's a couple of cool uh, libraries out there that help you. Um, this one, you start filling it in, and automatically figure it out, figures out which um, which card you have. It automatically kind of selects along the um, the field. So when you get to the expiry date, it kind of highlights that. And the moment that you kind of like try to fill in the CVV, it switches to the back and kind of shows you approximately where it is in your cart. Um, similarly, skew cart, similar thing, but you actually fill it in on the cart itself. And at some point it will tell you, hey, you know, this is a visa, you probably want to flip over your cart and use that one. Interesting stuff. Um, there's another one, this one, which I didn't display. Again, my slides will be online later on. Um, we've gone for a bit of a simpler model. Like, so when you see, like, when, we, when you type a visa number, it says CVV, but when you type Amex, it says CID. We realize most people know exactly which number we're talking about, and they know where to find them. We don't need a little bubble explaining it. Um, cool. Step four. So the fourth one I see is, uh, is not displaying the dates the same way they are on my card. I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever seen a credit card. Most of the time, it's like, Month, month, year, year, with a slash in between it or not. Pretty much all of them. Uh, and still we get these amazing things where you have to fill in, fill in words. Uh, and like this is just four different websites, right? So there's, that one's like using numbers and numbers. That one is using, it's got both. So those two are both B and C, both have them <laughs> both, but like in different orders. It really makes it really annoying if, if you're using like a tool like One Password or any kind of like management tool to kind of automatically fill in your credit card details. It makes it a real pain in the ass because you can't actually, you know, it can't detect that because it doesn't know that when you mean seven, you probably mean July. Um, I love this one. This is, uh, it says here expires over there. It's a bit hard to see. Uh, it doesn't actually say what it's expected. I'm assuming it means month, month, year, year, but could be anything. Um, maybe it wants unicorns. Five. Now I skip five. Let's do another joke. Okay. So a credit card walks into a bar. He tries to pick somebody up at the bar. They turn him down. The credit card looks at the bartender and says, "Well, this is awkward. Normally I'm the one who declines." <laughs> okay. Let's do five. So you don't validate my number in line. So credit card numbers are just like ISBN numbers or any of these kind of um, barcodes. Uh, you can pretty much validate them in line. So to give you an example, it's called the LUN algorithm. This is a valid credit card. This is not my credit card number. Don't try to use this. This, <laughs> this is just a fake credit card number. Um, what you do is you turn it around. You take every second digit and double it. 
you do a mod nine on the number. So like, I think the, where is it? Like the six becomes 12, mod nine leaves you with three. Uh, then you add them all up. And if that's divisible by 10, right, then it's a valid number. Now, how do we achieve that? Very simple, the last digit on a credit card, that's not, that's just a check digit. Um, and it's funny, like the amount of websites that don't actually check this. Um, this is, what is this, JCPenney? Or, yeah, JCPenney, like, that number is not correct. Like, four and 15 ones is like one of those test numbers. So with a two, that's definitely incorrect. You submit the form, it errors about everything except for <laughs> about the credit card number. Um, and then you have these websites like, well, you know, you're only allowed to fill in numbers, no spaces or dashes or any of that kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, either strip it or like add some front end code so you can't actually fill it in. Um, even Amazon doesn't do it. Like Amazon doesn't really care until you say add your card. That's when they validate it. But you could validate it perfectly in line. Um, and same thing with Stripe. Stripe, similar issues. You, you type it. You type the whole number, they automatically inline detect that it's a visa, but it's not until you press the donate button that it actually detects that the card number is actually invalid. With us, the moment you hit two, the moment you hit that last digit, it runs the check, it sees whether or not it's valid, and tells you or not. But actually, this is like a sign of something more complex, right? The sign that we're seeing here is, is that filling in 16 digits is a hard thing. So one library I recommend to people is Card.io. It's just a little library that you can build into like iOS and Android. And you take a picture of a card and it just reads out the digits. Because they're all in exactly the same font. Like they're all in this kind of like standard credit card font. So it's not hard to, for this app to just parse it. Somebody just takes up the phone, scans the card. They only need to fill in like the CVV or CID or CVV2 or um, <laughs> you understand what I mean? Uh, that's how easy it is. So six, well actually, it's not six. I'm not gonna make a joke again. It's more of a 5B. Um, how long is a credit card number? Anybody know? How many digits? Yeah, 16, almost. There's, there's a couple of exceptions. Uh, so Amex is 15, Visa is 13 or 16. Um, but pretty much what it means is like, you know how long a credit card number is, right? And if you can figure out it's a Visa, you can, you, you really shouldn't allow more digits than 16, effectively. This is Google Wallet. Google Wallet is hilarious. Like they, okay, they detect it's a visa. You know, you start typing in. I'm now at, uh, what is this? 11, I add some more, I add some more. Okay, that's a valid number, cool. Add some more, add some more. That's, what the hell? Like, you know how long the number is. It's not hard, it's easy. Um, six, you don't remember me. The amount of websites where I come back to and I need to fill in my credit card details every time still surprises me. At Braintree we made it very easy, like we use like full tokenization, so you fill in your credit card details and we tie that to your customer ID. But this is especially a problem on mobile, right? Again, you're on a small device, you're on a small, tiny little device. You don't want to fill it, take your credit card and fill it in every time you go through. Um, and this is not just a problem with credit card forms, to be honest. This is on mobile regardless of problem. This is actually the Amex app. And the Amex app is trying to be like extra secure so they don't let me remember my pass. Uh, they don't remember my login details. So every time I open the app, I need to log back in again. What does that do as a result? The result is my Amex password is a really easy password I can remember. Rather than a password that's really difficult that I fill in once and then, I don't know, maybe use Touch ID to then unlock it on a further notice. So related to that is, you know, is remembering too much. Who here, anybody of you ever processed credit card details? Anybody here actually ever stored credit card details on their servers? <laughs> Anybody actually lost them? Because no. that's the problem, right? Like that's the problem, like the amount of companies, and I'm not talking small companies, I'm talking pretty big companies that lose your credit card details are insane. Uh, 2014 alone, Home Depot had like 
56 million that they lost. Um, JP Morgan Chase, which is a bank, they actually lost quite a few. Uh, Staples, they had some big problems with their cash machines. They all lose this stuff. So if these guys can't do it, you can't do it, right? Realistically, it's, a, it's, it's not a good idea. It's still funny, the amount of companies where you call them and they go like, can I pay by credit card or PayPal? And they go, yes, just send us your credit card details over the phone. And I'm like, what are you gonna do with those? Oh, we put them in a spreadsheet. Like, <laughs> no, no. Um, the way this is generally solved these days is with tokenization. So what happens is like we turn your credit card or your PayPal or your Bitcoin uh, credentials, we turn those into, sorry, uh, Coinbase credentials. Um, we turn those into a token. So the, you're using your details to Braintree directly. We turn it into a token, we send that back to the merchant, and the merchant then uses that token to actually charge you. Which means that at best they can lose those tokens, but those tokens are revocable. And those tokens are tied to those API credentials. Um, the cool thing is, with our integration, like we, we, we take like different kind of methods. So we accept Apple Pay, we accept you know, all the major credit cards, and then we accept PayPal, and then Bitcoin all through that same technique. So this is what that looks like. Like you get like, you know, PayPal and Visa next to each other. Uh, and to the merchant, they're never storing any of these details for you. So they, and if they don't store it, they can't lose it. Okay, I'm at 20 minutes. Uh, one more joke. Credit card form walks into Bart. Bart then sent, says, you are new to this joint, aren't you? Credit card form looks at him and says, yeah, I just discovered it. <laughs> it's a discover card joke. It's not very popular in Europe. Uh, <laughs> okay, one of the last ones, uh, like you have a reset button. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Like in the early days of like web forms, like you could put a reset button at the bottom because after I filled in my credit card form, my credit card number, and I found out what my CVV is, and I filled in my name, I definitely want to hit the clear button. <laughs> you know, because refreshing my page was too much work. Uh, the great thing is like, this is, a, this is a great one. This one has the reset button in the bottom right. <laughs> so you go down the page, it's like, da, 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 I finally filled it in, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> um, okay. And number nine is like, you know, where was I again? Uh, this is like, oh, this is a pretty simple one. Uh, text fields with uh, placeholders or hints, right, that disappear the moment you click into them. So, you know, that's the street address and that's the zip code. What is this? Because my name is over there. Company name, maybe? Because it's not street address one, because then this would say street address two. I don't know what that is. And that's on the Apple website, right? This is the Apple store. Even they make that mistake. Um, increasingly, what we're seeing there is like stuff like this, where the moment you go into it, the label kind of like moves above. And we do the same thing with the expiration date. We actually did it like, it says expiration date. The moment you click into it, it kind of tells you like what the format is, but it tells you when you click into it. Okay, that's all for me. Um, you want another joke? Yeah? yeah? Okay, one more. Credit card walks into a bar. Bartender says, I haven't seen you in a while. Credit card forms, looks at him and says, yes, I had to go to jail. I was charged with bad humor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a lot of these things come from like bad donation forms. And there's a couple of other great websites that kind of show you like bad UX on uh, mobile phones. Uh, thank you very much from uh, the cat, and if you want some stickers or anything else, and I have the Raspberry Pi that's part of my setup with me too, so uh, if you wanna have a look at that, uh, come and meet me at the side of the stage. Cheers, thank you. <laughs>